This video is an excerpt from a larger course on Udemy. You can find the links in the comments below. This is the super fast version of uh, the visual timeline for JavaScript and ECMAScript. There's a much longer one, lots of detail. I would encourage you to do that. But this is the super fast. I don't really have time and I don't care about the details. I just want to see it. So we are going to start with the C programming language. This is, uh, is released in 1972. It's a precursor for almost all modern programming languages. JavaScript's no different. Most JS engines are written in, Java, uh, in C, and are in fa JavaScript is itself, in fact, a, a derivative of C. It just sort of shares the syntax. Microsoft is founded a couple years later. DOS comes out in 1981, and that paves the way for Windows, which is the means by which uh, JavaScript and the web will, will grow. And then Python comes out in 91. And in 91 also, this is the very first website that is ever, ever made. So in 91, there is one website. And in 92, that grows to 10. In 93, 94, we see about tenfold growth per year in websites. And in 93 is actually when the World Wide Web is, is open sourced by CERN, who made the, the first website. So our timeline starts in 1995. And... That is a, a, a we got another tenfold growth of 23k and Netscape is founded and the CEO of Netscape hired Brendan I Brendan Ike, a, a, an engineer to build a scripting language for the web for their browser Netscape Navigator and he, he wanted it to be accessible to designers and hobbyists and so on rather than competing with Python and and Java and C developers wanted it to be easy to make the web more dynamic. That same year, Cold Fusion came out. Java, Cold Fusion was Adobe's language. Java, PHP, Apache, and Ruby. So this is like the the who's who of modern web languages, pretty much. And that um, that uh, JavaScript or that language that Netscape started became JavaScript uh, in in May. It was actually live. It was actually MochaScript became a live script, and uh, Netscape had a deal in the works with Sun Microsystems, who made Java. And uh, they wanted Java to, to be able to, to run the server-side stuff in the browser, like applets, Java applets, and JSP pages. And they wanted this other scripting language to be doing the client side. So they allowed Netscape to use JavaScript, Java in the name, which is why it became JavaScript. So uh, they, one of the, another reason for, the, another reason for the, the rush order is that Netscape knows Microsoft is coming. And Internet Explorer is released that December, and now the fight is on. eBay comes out as well as Amazon. And then in 96, we have another uh, tenfold growth to a quarter million websites. And ECMAScript becomes the standard. And there's confusion here. So Brendan Eich, uh, he takes it to ECMA, which is a, a, a governing body in Geneva that's been around since the 60s, and wants them to standardize his language. Now, ECMAScript is the standard. It's, it's the, if you want to be considered this, you have to follow these rules. Well, JavaScript follows that standard, except ECMA can't call it JavaScript because that was a, a deal between Sun and Netscape. So they, they have to call it something else. So they end up calling it ECMAScript. So the standard is ECMAScript. The implementation is JavaScript. If not for Sun, it might have been called JavaScript. But that's just not how it worked out. In 97, we hit 1 million, which is a huge milestone. And JScript, which is Microsoft's version of JavaScript, they're in the same boat. They can't call it JavaScript. It wasn't very creative, but they came up with JScript. And e the ECMAScript standard is finished, and that is known as ES1. Uh, in 98, ES2 comes out. And Google is founded. So that's the beginning of Google, which is just going to get bigger and bigger. And in 99, ES3, and the, the versions, ES2 is not very big. ES3 has some important stuff like regular expressions. There's lots of uh, uh, exception handling. JSON is standardized and, and so on. The XML HTTP request object is also released in 99, which is what you use every time you make an AJAX request. So in 2000, things start to get uh, things start to get pretty interesting uh, in in a in a not good way. We've got uh, ES4 begins. It's not standardized. It just begins. Flash Player 5 is released, and ActionScript, which is Adobe's language inside of Flash, is ECMAScript, and it follows the ES4 standard. So now you have JavaScript, uh, JScript, 
and ActionScript, all of which are ECMAScript standards, or they, they follow the ECMAScript standard. Microsoft finally does something awesome and comes out with C Sharp after the debacle that was Windows 2000 and ME. Baidu is, is founded, which is kind of the Chinese version of, of Amazon. And the dot-com bubble is as, as at its absolute peak. So there's tons of money flowing into the businesses in the web. Yahoo's at its all-time high. ES4 has lagged on into 2001. And Y2K, which stole a ton of attention away from the web, uh, turned out to be a hoax. The dot-com bubble has popped. And now there's a big vacuum in the industry. In uh, uh, Wikipedia is also found in now in 2002, and, and, uh, and ES4 is still lagging. Firefox comes out, ES4 lags on another year, and finally in 2004, finally in 2004, it is abandoned formally. And this is this is very sad situation because if you look back at our timeline in '95. Uh, JavaScript was, was actually made in 10 days. Like I said, it was a rush order. It was made for a web that was only 25,000 websites. Now, it's known to be growing, but it is a very small thing for a very small number of websites. And it's competing with a huge number of web, uh, web programming languages. Almost nothing has changed. And we are all almost, we're 10 years out now. And JavaScript's still in the same place that it was. We've risen through the dot com bubble, and now it has popped. And, and JavaScript really has not changed uh, at all. 50 million websites now. The Facebook is founded. And ES 3.1 replaces ES 4 as the current work in progress. It's a, it's a compromise because Microsoft and, and uh, Yahoo are firmly against ES 4. Mozilla and, uh, I'm sorry, I think Adobe. No, Mozilla and Adobe are behind ES4. It involves classes and a lot of other uh, ES6 stuff, but Microsoft is so against it they threaten to sue. And so 3.1 is like, okay, we got to have some compromise. We got to get something out. It's not enough, but it's at least something. And that begins in 2004. Well, it goes on into 2005. Ajax, uh, the Ajax white paper is released, so people start talking about using Ajax. In 06, 3.1 is still kind of lagging. And jQuery comes out, and if you, if you if you don't like jQuery, it's totally fine. You don't really need to use it anymore. But it was an incredible release at the time because it unified the DOM uh, in a single language for the first time. Instead of having to worry about uh, browser transport, you know, transition, you know, making it uh, as transportable as possible rather to other browsers, jQuery kind of solved all that for us for the first time. YouTube is also purchased by Google and is becoming a, a big uh, a big player. It's still in Flash. It's still using Flash Player at this point, but we will get to that. BlackBerry uh, is is a very much a relevant uh, company, and Twitter is founded. That following year, we hit the 100 million mark. Gmail is uh, is is released or founded. And the first iPhone shows up. And that next year, Android comes out. So we've got smartphones now as well as people getting their, their email on the web instead of having to go to a, a dedicated client. And we've got people watching videos online. And we've got people starting to pound Twitter with tweets. Well, another big thing happened in 2008 and that V8 Engine came out along with Chrome. And the V8 Engine was revolutionary because it took... JavaScript and compiled it to machine code on the fly before it was run. That's a fast way of saying, or fancy way of saying it's really, really fast at running JavaScript. So with jQuery, as well as all the smartphones, which are, which are starting to need JavaScript, the V8 engine revolutionized everything. Well, we get to 2009, and finally ES5 is, uh, is released or is, is, is finalized. All it is is ES 3.1, but to manage or salvage the ridiculous numbering situation from 3 to 4 to 3.1, they just got rid of 3.1 and called it 5. It's nowhere near what it should be, but it, it is at least an update. Another big uh, big release is Node.js. Ryan Dahl has taken the V8 engine out of Chrome and turned it into its own process. So you can run JavaScript without the DOM for the first time in history totally revolutionized JavaScript and start start uh, competing 
with serious backend languages like Java and PHP and Ruby and Python and so on. And the other big thing is that Flash is, is killed. Steve Jobs, he announces that iOS will not support uh, Flash going forward, which means everything that Flash has been doing is going to have to is going to have to go to to JavaScript, or it won't be available on half of the half of the phones. So that is a big year. And if you just take a quick look at the at the chart again, almost nothing new has happened to JavaScript across its its 15 year history here. It, it started with a tiny web, not very many companies, with with a rush order to, to stay ahead of Microsoft and above the other languages, a quick deal with Sun Microsystems. 15 years later, there's over 100 million sites. JavaScript has, inter has in inherited so much stuff. It has inherited email, phone traffic. It's now it's responsible for Ajax. It's taken over everything that was Flash. 2010, Netflix starts streaming content. Instagram comes out. Angular's released as well as Backbone. So this is kind of the beginning of the golden age. We just kind of got out of the renaissance. The, the dark ages was maybe that 2000 to 04. And now we're in this golden age where JavaScript has found itself and we're getting these large frameworks. In 11, Ember comes out along with Twitter Bootstrap and Twitch. And in 12, we hit the half billion mark for websites. And JSON finally replaces XML as the predominant way to pass data around APIs. In 13, React comes out. And in 14, we hit 1 billion websites. We get the release of Vue.js and HTML5 is standardized. So we're in an even bigger position here where JavaScript, while, while modernized in ES5, there's some functional programming components and, and other good things like map and filter and reduce. But we are still way behind. JavaScript was has, has always done a good job at being what the web needs it to be today. And the web is now a high o octane, just a, a rolling monster with huge websites powered by JavaScript, both front end and back end, whether it's React and Angular or it's Node.js managing lots of async stuff. So in 15, ES6 is finally released. And this is what should have happened a long time ago, but it, it seeks to make JavaScript a modern language that's web capable. Now, if JavaScript was released today, it probably wouldn't look anything like ES6, but ES6 is an attempt to be able to get Java and C-sharp developers to be able to talk the speak with, with JavaScript developers, or Java developers who need to make a jump to JavaScript can use ES6 and it will feel like a modern programming language. In 17, and 16, ES7 comes out, and in uh, 17, ES8 comes out, and now we are due for ES next. So if, you're, if, you're, if you've been doing JavaScript for a long time but haven't made the jump, or, or you, you're a program in another language and you're just not sure what to make of it, just look at the, the chart here. I mean, it, it really comes down to JavaScript was made to be a simple scripting language and it needed uh, to be no more. Well, that was 25 years ago and it needs to be updated in a bad way and it got that update in 2015. More is coming. ES Next will be exciting. But ES6 uh, is definitely where you should be moving. In, in my following videos, we'll actually start looking at some of the ES6 and try and get through some of the easy wins and get your JavaScript updated.